and how to force a man to chase you like a drug addict. Number one, we're going to have the first Hi, let's imagine meeting a guy and we're going to take you through all the steps that you're going to take in order to get him to chase you like a drug addict. So let's imagine you meet him and let's say he just sees you at an event. He sees you at the event. He thinks you're cool. He asks you out on a dinner date. Cool. All good because we don't want to meet guys on dating apps. That's bad. This is very important to set the precedent for the rest of the relationship. In this scenario, let's imagine, and he's setting up this dinner date, you want to make sure that the first high is the best high. And what I mean by that is you want to make sure that when he finally meets you in person, he's get has the best experience with you that he possibly can have because that first experience is going to set the groundwork for everything you're going to be building off of so let's imagine you go out on this first dinner date you need to bring a particular mindset to that dinner date you're going to bring some nice fun flirty energy and you're also going to bring the mindset and the mind frame that you are most interested in him and getting to know him and you're excited about that because what you're trying to do in this first high in this first meeting is you're trying to enchant him okay the way that you cast a spell on this guy is by making sure that you bring that excitement and that energy to the date that he then in turn mirrors that excitement and energy and while he's mirroring that excitement and energy now you can extract from him everything that you want in the relationship on these dates let's imagine you're on this date right you're bringing fun flirty energy that doesn't mean you're agreeing with everything that he says actually i would advise you to not agree with everything that he says bring your own opinions and perspective to the table okay maybe you want to challenge him a little bit be interesting and make it fun you don't have to challenge him in a way that's mean or degrading or disrespectful but you can bring fun flirt fun flirty energy can also be challenging it doesn't mean you just got to sit there and be boring okay you can bring energy and excitement to that first high you want him to feel things and i'm going to say this multiple times as we have this discussion you want him to associate you with feelings and emotions strong feelings and emotions this is how you turn him into a drug addict if he does not feel strong feelings and emotions when he thinks of you or when he's around you, this will not work how it's supposed to work. He's not going to be chasing you around at all whatsoever because him feeling those strong feelings and emotions towards you and of the relationship, situation, talking stage, whatever you want to call it, is what's going to make him come back to you over and over again and want more and more and more i know for those of you in the uk i don't know if you guys call it banter or maybe you guys say chat i don't know how you guys say because when i be watching love island sometimes they describe it a little bit different but banter is the idea is just the back and forth that goes on when two individuals are having a conversation that's fun and flirty and exciting where you might challenge me on some things you might tease me make fun of me a little bit right and it's fun it's not disrespectful it's not rude right we're both having fun but we both poke a little bit of of uh of fun at each other and it's and it's exciting that that that's cool it's it's enjoyable right that's part of the experience you want him to feel things here's the mistake that a lot of you are making especially on this first high the mistake a lot of you are making is that you're so worried that oh oh my god i want him to like me so badly that i'm not going to disagree with anything that he says i'm not going to challenge anything that he says i'm not going to make fun of him or poke fun at anything that he says i'm just going to be here i'm going to speak when spoken to i'm going to say yes and no yes as many times as i possibly can i'm going to say no as many times as say no as little as i have to hoping that as if i'm more agreeable he'll like me more when in reality all he's going to feel is indifference towards you and we'll get to indifference in a little bit because indifference is a very big part of what you're not trying to do you do not want him to feel indifference towards you when you guys are having conversation or when you guys are on these dates especially in person you do not want him to feel indifference if he begins feeling indifference he's not going to be chasing you he's not going to be obsessed with you you're not going to be his drug i can guarantee you that you don't become memorable to a guy if he doesn't feel anything towards you that's why i always tell you guys 
if a guy starts describing you as chill, oh, I like you because you're so chill. Oh, I like her because she's so chill. You're just such a chill person to be around. It's just so chill when we hang out. Oh, you not doing this right. Because nobody who is obsessed with someone, nobody who is drunk in love, nobody who feels like you're their drug would describe the, the feeling they get when they hang out with you as chill. The people telling you that it's chill when you're around and they like you because of how chill you are, are really describing indifference. And they're describing the fact that they don't feel any particular way about you or towards you when you guys do spend time together. And so the indifference just makes them feel chill, which really means it makes them feel nothing. They're not happy. They're not sad. They're not anything. They're just indifferent to the experience. Okay. It's very important that you are very strategic with that first high. If you're not strategic with that first high, that first hit that he gets of you, that first experience he gets of you, you're not going to be able to do the rest of the things that need to be done because that first high is what's going to keep him wanting more and coming back that you can then start manipulating the situation even more to your advantage. Okay. As you're having him experience this first high you want to make sure majority of all that he gets to know about you happens in person on this day or on the like either on the first date or on the first couple of dates right either way it has to happen in person you do not give him the opportunity to get to know you anything about you over text because you want to make sure that first high hits him hot and heavy it's like a wash over him. You don't want to give him any low quality dosages of you that he can then come to the conclusion that, oh, she's cool or, oh, she's like the other girls I met or, oh, she's very similar to another girl I know. You don't want him to associate any of the feelings or thoughts or experiences he's had with other girls to you. You want to be a completely unique experience that he feels like he hasn't got to experience enough, which is why you give him that first tie, but even leading up to that first tie and in between that, and even directly after that, you do not want to allow him to experience you in any capacity outside of that really high quality first high okay so for when i say first high i just mean that first date because that first date is going to be his real heavy dosage of one-on-one -on -one time with you where he can actually get an understanding of your personality what you're like how you speak how you talk how you react how you respond your banter how he feels about you you know how you guys get along all of that good stuff you want that all to hit him like a wave right at the beginning so remember what i talked about right indifference is bad indifference is chill indifference is the horrible for you you want to get him obsessed you want to be like a drug that he'll be addicted to so that first high that first feeling that first experience has to hit him like a wave so he's got to get all of the feels, all of the experience, all of the understanding. Oh, now I see that we banter really go. Now I see that you're so much fun. Now I see you're so adventurous. Now I see you're so exciting and bubbly and we, and we laugh and we giggle and we make jokes. All of that has to be one experience with you. That way it's as impactful as it can possibly be. A lot of you are making the mistake of texting these guys even before the first date or leading up to the first date or even before he's planned the first date with you that he kind of feels like he's getting to know you he kind of feels like he's understanding you he kind of feels like he's getting a sense of your personality and how you guys get along and so what happens is he becomes satisfied with that those very low dosages low quality versions of you and he doesn't he's not as inspired or motivated to be like nah i gotta take her out on a date or not nah, i gotta meet her in person or not nah, you know i i want to um make sure i get the chance to ask her out on a date so that we can go out and i can experience her that's the mistake that a lot of you guys are making that's why it's so important when you're leading up to that first high you do not allow him the opportunity to get to know you at all aside from that first high and even when you come out on that first high that first date you want to make sure you're in the right mind frame so that means you're gonna have to actively do things for yourself that put you in a good mood that when you show up on that date 
you're able to bring the right energy and project that outwardly because he's going to absorb that energy that you're projecting outwardly. And then he's going to walk away from that first tie from that first date feeling exactly how uh, what he absorbed from you. So if you're bubbly, if you're excited, if you're fun, if you're flirty, he's going to walk away from that date remembering you as fun, flirty, exciting and bubbly and full of life. He's also going to feel in himself. You're going to bring out of him because he's absorbing that from you, his fun, flirty, bubbly, exciting self. So he's going to associate the thoughts and the feelings of being fun, adventurous, being interested, being stimulated, he's going to associate all of those feelings and emotions towards you. So if you go on that first date and you're in a horrible mood, probably you probably want to cancel the date because none of this is going to work properly. When you show up on that first date and the energy he's absorbing from you is, well, she's miserable. Whoa, she's got a tough life. Whoa, she's just got so much going on. Whoa, she doesn't even seem like she's emotionally ready to be in a relationship. He, all he's going to be able to think back to when he thinks about you and thinks of his first high with you. Damn, that was a horrible high. I actually, I remember just being so discombobulated. I remember just feeling horrible the next day. I remember like the whole thing was a terrible experience. If you've ever taken a drug, hopefully you haven't, but if you've ever taken a drug, you know that that first high is likely going to determine a lot of whether or not you experience a second high. Because if your first high was horrible, you're going to have to be convinced that your second high is supposed to be better. But if your first high is amazing, nobody has to convince you to take a second one because it's just that much easier after experiencing it and having all of those good memories and emotions after your first high, which is why you want to be very careful how you present yourself and the energy you bring to the date. If you're in a horrible mood, let's say you had a bad hair day, you had a bad everything day, you will probably want to cancel that date because if you show up on that date and that first time, that first experience of you and you're in a horrible mood and you're miserable, he's going to think to himself, I feel horrible and miserable when I'm around her. It's also important that while you're on this first date, while you're having him experience this first high, you do not focus on talking or sharing too much about yourself. Now, obviously there's a balance. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't say anything. That doesn't mean that anytime uh, he asks you a question, you be so short and so uh, dry with it that he's like, whoa, what's your problem? You upset or anything like that? No, that's not what that means. What that means is when you come to the date with this fun, flirty, bubbly energy and interested energy, you want to actually, this is, if you have to Think of it like this. Think of it like this. You want to, in your mind, you're playing a game that the more you get to know of him and about him, the more points you get in the piggy bank or whatever, however you want to think of it, right? So you want to be as interested in learning about him as you possibly can. And when I say interested, I literally mean like you ask him a question, then you ask him a follow-up question, the next question. And even while he's answering the questions, it's like everything he's saying, you're like, you're like hooked on the story. Everything he's saying, you're like, oh my God, this is the, you're telling me the best story ever. I can't believe your life is like, even if he's telling you the most mundane, boring stuff, just be like, wow, that's so exciting. I've never met someone like that. Or I've never, I've never met someone that does that. Or I didn't even know that's so cool that you do that. And that's so, da -da -da. and you just feeding his ego and allowing him to feel like, wow, she's so interested in me. Wow. She cares about me so much. Wow. I, she, she thinks I'm so awesome and so amazing, right? Because what's going to happen, he's going to walk away from that date with those positive emotions that, oh my God, I feel so good when I'm with her. Oh my God, I have so much fun when I'm with her. Oh my God, I just share so much and I talk about so much and I feel so open. I feel like I can share anything with her. All of those emotions and thoughts will be rolling through his mind as his experience of the first high he's ever had with you. And so when he thinks back to you, he's going to be thinking, wow, that was such a good first high. I've got to get that again. So it's very important that when you show up on this date, you don't spend all, you don't come to this date miserable, just ready to spill your guts about, oh, I had this horrible day and this happened to me and that happened to me and this happened and that happened. And then he kind of walks away from the date kind of like, she's kind of boring. She just sat there, talked about herself. She didn't really care anything about me. Wasn't really interesting. Anything she was saying, she just kind of went on a rant and she took my money 
um, you know, because I paid for the date and I didn't get anything from her. That was just a horrible experience. You don't want that. You want him to be focused on I'm sharing. I'm talking. I'm having fun. This is interesting. I'm stimulated. We have banter. We're going back and forth. Everything is positive, strong, positive emotions, e just strong emotions in general. You do not want him to have indifference towards you. Number two, sober Again, you guys go on that first date. You want him to return back to normal. You want him to get sober again. That first high was amazing. That first experience with you was awesome. But now it's time to go back to reality, which is good. If you're going to get him to chase you like a drug addict, you want him to at a certain point return back to reality after this first high. You don't want him to be in a cycle of right after he gets to see you, right after he spends some time with you, that he then is able to continue seeing you because that first high is great, that first high is awesome, but you don't want him to get used to you being around all of a sudden. You want him to actually have to go back to his life and think to himself, wow, that was such a great experience that I had with her. I felt so good. I had so much fun. It was so enjoyable. You want him to get his wheel spinning that he wants to experience that high again. So it's very important. After you go out on that first date, you let him go back to normal. That means you don't call him. You don't text him. Okay. You don't FaceTime him. And even if he does try to call you and text you and FaceTime you a bunch right after the date, you keep your distance. Now, obviously you have a balance. If he calls you and texts you three, four, five times in a row, answer one of them. Don't try and have a huge conversation with him, but answer it just so he doesn't think you've ghosted him. So he doesn't think you blocked him. So he doesn't think that you're uninterested in him. Okay. You don't, you want to be balancing what's going on because you don't want him to think that you're uninterested in the date or you used him. You want him to feel like you actually really enjoyed the date. You just also want him to feel like you have other things going on in your life. So even though you enjoyed the date, it's not like you're going to be texting him and calling him and speaking to him 24 seven because your life is still going on. Even though you, ha she had, or sorry, even though you had a great time with her, with him. So it's very important that as you're allowing him to become sober again, you don't entertain any casual conversation or attempt for him to get to know you over the phone. I want you guys to be paying attention to this because what a lot of guys will do is they'll take you out for that first day. Even if they have that good first high, they'll be so high on it and they'll want to be around you and speak to you so much, they'll begin texting you like a maniac. They'll start calling you like a maniac. They'll even maybe FaceTime you like a maniac for some of you, right? And the thing is, if you like the date, if you enjoy the date, so what do you do back? You're giving him back the same energy. But what you need to be doing is keeping your distance that he can stay on the thought of that first high, that he his mind can continue being on the fact that he wants to experience you more. And again, this is why a lot of you get caught in a situation where you may go on one date with the guy and then all of a sudden you get into this trap of just constantly texting and calling, but he never actually makes plans for the second date or the next couple of dates, especially after that first really good experience. They're obviously going to want to experience you more. They're obviously going to want to see you more. They're going to want to speak to you more. Guys also get caught into the cycle of being on the phone and feeling like they're experiencing you through the phone that by texting you and even calling you calling is good, but calling is a supplement for the real thing, which is in person as, but texting, especially right. Even the guys get caught in that loop of, Oh, I'm seeing her. I'm hearing for her from her if I'm texting her a bunch. So after that first high that they get, they're like, Oh my God, I want more. I want more. So what am I going to do? I'm going to text her and he texts you a lot and you text him a lot back. But what does that also do that satisfies the feeling of him being like, oh, now I have to return back to normal. Now I have to be sober again. I have to experience what my life was like before her without her. But now that you're back in texting form in low quality form, he feels like he's getting just the smallest dosage of you again. The problem is if he's getting just the smallest dosage of you, it's just enough to kill his desire uh, to wanting to get another big high. 
You understand what I'm saying? Are you following along with the, the analogy here? Because you're giving him just enough that it feels like, um, I don't need the big high. I'm, I'm good for the next couple of days. I'm good until next week. And it just continues down that cycle where you're just giving him just the smallest dosage of you, just enough that he feels like he's getting to know you or experiencing you, that he's not quite motivated enough to say, hey, I want to take her out on a second date. Hey, I got to see her again. Hey, I got to spend time with her again. I got to be around her again. You want him to return to being sober again, that he can actually be able to contrast what it felt like to be in a relationship, not be in a relationship, to be on a date with you and experience you and be around you versus what his life is like when he's not with you and he's not around you and he's not on a date with you. You actually want him to be able to experience that contrast that he can say to himself, oh, I actually want to be around her again. Oh, I actually want to spend time with her again. Oh, I actually need her around some more. Very important that you give him an opportunity to return to his life as it previously was without you, which means you can't be texting a whole bunch. You can't be calling him a whole bunch. And if he is calling and texting you a whole bunch, you keep your distance. Now, very important as you're keeping your distance, you don't want to make the mistake of making it too much distance you don't want to you don't want him to be confused that you don't that you don't like him or you're not interested in him or you're ghosting him or you're just you just used him for a dinner date and you had no intention of building a relationship in the process of you being distant you make it difficult for him to contact you during this time that way he can wonder about you think about you and you can begin growing that cycle of the obsession right? Because he'll be going back and forth in his mind, but you also don't want it to be too much distance that you never text him. You never answer any of his calls. You never uh, call him back. You never do anything back for him and, or show interest. Sorry, I should say back to him that he thinks you're actually uninterested in him. It's a balance, a very delicate balance. And as, as you practice this, you'll be able to feel the balance going on. Okay. Allow him to double text you. That's fine. But that doesn't mean you never answer any of his texts when he double texts you and then he calls you three times and then he tries to FaceTime you. Okay. It's a balance in between that where he can feel like you still are interested in him. You still want to talk to him. You still want to may maybe go out on a second date if he asks you out on a second date, but not so much that you're dying for it. Not so much that he's the only thing that's going on in your life. Have you, I want to ask you guys, for those of you who have been in a situation where you've been with someone that felt like a drug to you, was part of the experience, the fact that when you weren't together or even at periods and times in your relationship or situationship, whatever it may be, that you question to yourself, does this person really like me? Or is this person not very interested in me? If you do the job of enchanting him on that date, giving him that first eye, and it's really, it's a really great experience. What's going to happen after is when you become distant, he's going to start playing in his mind. Like we just said, is she really interested in me? Does she not like me? Did I do something wrong on the date? Did I say something wrong on the date? Did she just use me to go out on the date and have fun? Was she really even having fun or what was I doing too much talking? And all of that process of him going back and forth in his mind of does she like me or does she not? That become that starts the cycle of the addiction, right? Because now he's spending all his time going back and forth in his own mind about you, which is good. It's what you want right? That's how you inspire that chase and that drug addiction kind of feeling because he starts saying to himself, he starts replaying every single detail in his mind about the date. Imagine that you go out on one date with the guy and now he's replaying in his mind. Okay. But I, when we, when we got the first, we got the appetizer and I made this joke and she kind of made a face, but okay, but she made that face. I thought she thought it was funny. But okay, I think she maybe she didn't think that joke was funny. Do you maybe she was offended? Oh, you're an idiot, bro. Why would you say that? Oh, you're so dumb. That was so stupid. And then I talked about my last relationship. Now she probably thinks I'm an idiot. And you see, like, it just they just they spiral. Just like this. They spiral. They're just going the same way you've probably experienced. They just begin spiraling. Especially when they enjoyed that experience with you. 
there's nothing more painful as a human being than than spending some time with another human being liking the time you're spending with them feeling good about the uh situation right or the date or whatever it may be and then walking away from it realizing that that person didn't even like you and the whole time you're like damn i thought we were getting along so well that confusion is very painful right and that realization that you like someone that actually didn't like anything about your vibe is very painful and it can cause you to kind of spiral and just say to yourself oh man why did i do that why did i say that how come i didn't realize how stupid i sounded how come i didn't realize what i was actually saying how come i didn't realize that they weren't even really interested in me and that spiral in the process of you being just distant enough that he has to return to being sober again He's going to start spiraling, thinking, damn, that was such a good first time. But I don't know. Maybe she doesn't like me. I don't know. Maybe she's not into me. I don't know. Maybe I was just being too weird. or I was talking too much or she's just probably just faking her interest in me. And she's probably just trying to be nice now. And she doesn't actually like me. And they just they just go and they just go and they just go and they can't stop thinking about it. Now they're like in the in their daytime, they're just replaying every single instant of the date and every single inst every single facial expression you made, every single nuance, the way you picked up your fork, everything about you to try to analyze is how I feel the correct way that she feels or is everything I feel a lie or am I confused? All of that good stuff and that is good for you. Number Three, missing the high. As he begins to think about you more and contrast how good he felt with his normal life, his boring life, his sober life, he will begin to chase the feeling he had with you and want to see you again so that he can get that feeling back. You have to make him work for that feeling. This is why I say it's so important that he doesn't feel indifference towards you. He feels very strong emotions towards you. If he feels indifference towards you, you're going to be in a very bad place because if he feels indifference towards you, he's just chill about everything. There's no emotions or feelings to chase after because you are an individual, you are a person, but you also have to understand you are also an experience. That's the same reason why multiple different people can describe you in multiple different ways. Because they're not just experiencing you as an individual, they're experiencing you as an experience in its entirety. So where someone meets you also factors into their experience of you. How someone meets you factors into their experience of you. The situations or things that happen or events that happen in the process of going out on a date with you or being around you factor into their experience of you. This is why someone could meet you in one setting and have one particular experience of you. And someone could meet you in a totally different setting and have a completely different experience and understanding of you. There's probably a guy out there that may have met you in a club maybe one night when you were super just out of it and dancing and doing crazy and acting crazy. And he might have a particular experience with you. And then there might also be another guy who met you at Home Depot and thinks you're the, the finest, best thing since sliced bread. And you're such a, an amazing stay at home wifey who takes care of, you, you know, your loved ones or your cat or your dog, whatever, because you are an individual, but you are also an experience. And the things that are happening around someone when in the process of experiencing you will drastically change how they feel about you. Because when they think back to the thought of you, they're also going to be thinking back to the experiences they had when they were with you, which is why you have to be very calculated with the experience someone has on that first high with you because you want them to miss the high because you want them to miss the experience of being around you, not just you, the experience of being with you. And you want to make him work for that feeling because now you're in a situation where he's had a good first high, where he's had a good first experience, and that was enjoyable for him. Now he knows what it feels like to be sober again. And he can contrast that with his real life, with his regular life. And now when he wants to get the second high, right, go on the second date, because he knows without the second date, he's not going to be able to experience you over text. He's not going to be able to call you a bunch simply because you're busy and you have lots of other things to do. He's going to realize, OK, if I want this second high, I'm actually going to have to put work towards it. This is where you guys need to actually really pay attention. OK, I want you guys paying very close attention to this because this is super important. You are 
going to be balancing the fact that he wants to go on another date with him. You don't want to make it so easy to go on a second date with you that he doesn't feel like it took any work. Now, I know this is confusing to a lot of you because you're like, well, if he asked me out on a second date, why don't I just say yes if I'm free the next day? Why don't I just say yes if I'm free that same day? Why don't I just say, I mean, he's asking me out on a date. Isn't that the whole point of this? He's asked me out on a date. Yes, that's the point. No, that's not the way you want to go about it. If you want him to experience you like a drug, you want to know why? Because missing the high is not enough. We're going to talk about anticipation right after this. They're kind of, they're all uh, combined um, with each other, but it's a very important that in the process of him missing the high, he feels like in order to get the next high, there actually has to be real effort put in that anticipation can actually be built. So it's not just about missing the high and in the same moment that he misses the high is the same moment that he gets the second high. He's got to miss the high, but also feel like, damn, as much as I miss the high, I still have to wait for my next high. So you don't want to allow him to just say, oh, you're free tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll do tomorrow because you're free every day. So you never have a schedule. Okay. This is why I always tell you guys, it's very important to figure out what your passions and hobbies and things you enjoy doing are that you'll actually have a schedule and things to do where a guy can't just be like, are you free tomorrow? Are you free right now? Are you free in an hour? And you're actually just like, yeah, I'm actually just sitting on my couch doing nothing. So if you want to take me out on a date, that would literally be the best thing ever because I literally have nothing better to do with my life. You actually want to have things going on in your life that when a guy is trying to plan a second date with you, you are genuinely not free to just hang out the next day. I know this is going to sound crazy. I know this is going to sound weird. I would advise you to not say yes to the first date that he asks you on. So for example, if he asks you on a second date, he's like, okay, are you free? Let's say today is uh, Tuesday. And he's like, hey, uh, I wanna go on a second date. Are you free uh, tomorrow on Wednesday at 6 p.m.? And I want you to actually say no to that, okay? I want you to say no. I want you to say that you're busy, you're doing something. Even if you're not busy, I want you to say you're doing something, okay? Then when he asks you, okay, when are you free? Or when can you go on a date? Or when can we go out together? I Truthfully, truth, I, this is going to sound really weird. I want you to push the next date or the next available day that you have at the very least, let it be a week later. So if he asks you, oh, um, today's Tuesday. Do you want to go out on a date tomorrow? You say no to that. Then when he says, okay, when are you free next? When can we hang out? When can we go on this date? I really want to take you out on this date. You make it the next Tuesday at the very least, at the very least, doesn't have to be exactly like that, but make it the next week at the very least. Now you might be like, but, but he's going to be uninterested in me, no, but, 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 but he won't like me anymore, but, 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 but he's going to get bored in the time of the week and then this and then he won't, he won't care to me to go out on a date in a week. And no, hold your water, take a chill pill. You're trying to inspire a drug addict. Okay. You want him to be anticipating, we'll get to anticipation in a bit. You want him to be anticipating when he's gonna see you. You want him to spend actual time missing the high. You actually want him to feel agony that he doesn't get access to you because when he finally does get access to you, it's going to make even the smallest mundane things seem so much bigger. For those of you who have ever been in a long distance relationship or been in a relationship where you couldn't see that person all the time, it's exactly that same experience. You're not doing anything particularly special when you finally do see the person or hang out with the person, but each hangout or date or time spent together feels so much bigger because they come so much uh, less frequently. And so each time you see them, it holds way more importance. Now imagine if you did that in combination with them not getting access to you over the phone where they can text you all the time and get validation, right? Because the guys get validation too. When they realize that, you, that you're starting to like them, that they're taking you out on these dates and you're into them and you're super eager to go out on the next date and, and like you, you, know, you wanna spend all your days with them and 24 hours with them and you wanna sleep over, that's validation for the guys as well. So if he's going in back and forth in his mind that, oh my God, I'm not sure if she likes me. Oh my God, I'm not sure if she's interested in me. Oh my God, she's so much, she's so busy. She doesn't even have time for me. That's good. 
But if he gets to the point where he feels like he doesn't have to miss the high because, oh, if I want to hang out with her, I can hang out with her any day. She's free every day. Any day that I want to spend with her, she'll be free. Anytime that I text her and say, I, I want to go out on the second date, perfectly fine. We could go out on the second date, you know, the next day. Doesn't even matter what time she'll be free. Anytime she'll, even if she's not free, she'll move her schedule for me. When he feels like that, that's also validation. And then what does he feel? He feels indifference towards you. Okay. Because he doesn't have to think about anything. He doesn't have to plan anything because when you, he wants you or when he wants you to be available to him, you will be available to him. So he doesn't miss the high. There's no agony associated with you. Remember, I told you, you want him to associate with you strong emotions, not just positive emotions like joy and happiness. You want him to associate with you strong emotions in general, because that's what's actually going to create that drug addiction. It's not just about the highs. It's also about the lows. I know this sounds super deep and super manipulative and super like psych psychology, you know, tricks, but it's real. Okay. It's not just about feeling good and happiness and excitement and joy and all the positive stuff. It's also about feeling agony and sadness and pain when he's not with you. That's also good, as shocking as that sounds. So once he's asked you on multiple dates, you don't say yes to the first date. Okay, you don't make it that easy. And when he asks you when you're next free, you allow the next time you're free to at the very least be sometime next week that he actually has to sit back and anticipate you for seven days. That's a perfect segue into our next one, which is anticipation. As he begins to anticipate this next date, because remember, you just said no to the first date. And when he said, when are you free to reschedule? He, you said, okay, next Tuesday. So as he begins to anticipate the, the next week that he's going to see you in this time period, this is very important. Make sure you're listening in this time period, guys are going to attempt to receive some validation, pay very close attention. This is very important as this is happening. Guys will usually try to reach out to you. So let's say you've planned this date and now it's set for next Tuesday. What guys are going to try to do is they're going to try to reach out to you and get to know you and have conversation with you leading up to this second date. You want to know why? Because they want the validation that you're ongoing, continuously interested in them enough that you're actually excited to go out on the second date. You do not respond to his attempts to get to know you over the phone. Do not validate him leading up to this second high to this second date because he'll be seeking that validation from you to ease his own anxiety that, oh my God, like she's so busy. She said no to the first me asking her to go on the, the second date the first time. And now it's going to be a week until I see her. Oh my God, she's so busy. What is she doing? Is she working a whole bunch? Is she like hanging out with friends? She must have so much friends. She must have so much to do. Are other guys taking her out on dates? Is that why she doesn't have any time for me? Are other guys doing stuff with her? Like what's going on? Why, why, why do I have to wait a week until the next time that I see her? All of this is building that anticipation, right? And, and also building that anxiety. And so he's going to attempt to get rid of his and ease his anxiety by getting validation from you in that way to know that, oh, you're, you're ready to go out on the date. Yeah. You want to talk to him. Yeah. You want to see him. Yeah. You want to this and that. And so he's going to try to hold conversation leading up to that second high leading up to that second day. It's very important that you give him no validation. Now, as you give him no validation, you're busy, you're doing things. You can't be sitting around on the phone, answering a whole bunch of calls and text and, and being on FaceTime till 4 a.m. You got other stuff to do. His anxiety is going to be building. Also, his anticipation is going to be building for the next time he sees you. You still want to balance that out with the times that you do speak to him, right? Because you're not going to never speak to him that he thinks you're uninterested. The times that you do speak to him, you want to make sure you sprinkle in. I'm so excited for this next date. I'm so excited to see you in person, in person, in person, in person. I only want you, this is very important, okay? Listen to this very closely. I only want you to express your excitement with seeing him in person. Listen to what I just said. I only want you to express your excitement with seeing him in person because as a man, he will begin to associate 
The times where you're the happiest is when you're spending time with him in person. And so as he begins the process of seeking and chasing after your approval, because he wants you and because he likes you, he's going to begin saying to himself, if I want her to be happiest with me, I need to see her in person more, not text her more, not call her more, not FaceTime her more. I need to see her in person person more because she's expressing to me that she's most excited when we go out on these dates, that she's most excited when we spend time together one-on-one -on -one in person. And remember, you've put him in an anxious state of mind where he's thinking to himself, what does she want? What does she need? Does she like me? Is she interested in me? Is she happy with me? Is she unhappy with me? Am I doing the right thing? Am I saying the right thing? That anxious state of mind is what's going to push him to be like, as soon as you give him the smallest hint that there's something you enjoy, that there's something you like, he's going to be like, oh, I got to do, I got to do a hundred of that. Because I've been wondering this whole time if she likes me, if she's interested in me. Now I know she loves it when we spend time together in person. That's exactly what I got to be doing the most. And you might be like, is this really happening? Trust me, it's really happening on a subconscious level that even the guys can't realize. Because he's going to be trying to ease his own anxiety. As he's trying to ease his own anxiety and confirm to himself that you like him, that you find him interesting, that you like the experience of being around him. The moment you say, I do like the experience of spending time with you and seeing you and talking to you, but I enjoy it the most when we're in person, everything he's focused on is going to be in person now. And what's going to happen is he's going to shift from thinking, oh, does she like me? Does she not? Maybe she's not texting me because she doesn't like me. He's going to think, oh, no, she just doesn't text me because she'd rather us spend time together in person and she's busy. She's doing other stuff, but she actually still enjoys her time with me. And I know I enjoy my time with her, so I know I want to see her in person more. That's the mistake that a lot of you guys are making. Like I said, you're not building a lot of anticipation. Why? Because you're constantly available on this phone to text all the time. Texting is literally is the worst crutch that all of you are utilizing to actually self-sabotage your ability to get dates out of these guys. Because as you text and you text and you text and you text and you text, you're literally simultaneously decreasing his desire to actually take you out on a date and see you in person because the guys also feel like as they're texting you so much that they're getting to know you that they're experiencing you that they're seeing you that they're meeting you i know it sounds silly they feel like they're going out on dates with you as they're texting you 24 7 even the guys but what does that do if he feels like he's going out on a date date with you 24 7 why would he actually want to go out on a real date with you in real life? That's why it becomes a self-sabotaging addiction. And this is the bad type where both of you are in the process of texting and, and doing these kind of like text dates where it's like kind of like an ongoing text date all the time. Then there's no antici there's no anticipation left to be built for the real in-person date. OK, that's why it's very important. Sorry for the motorcycles outside my house. That's why it's very important to be, be distant in the process of him having that um, anticipation and feeling that anxiety that he wants to be like, oh, let's talk. Let's let's have fun. Oh, my God. We're, the second date's going to be so far away. I don't want to wait so long. I want to feel validated in the process before we get on the second date. You don't give him that value. The only thing you do that gives him validation is tell him how excited you are once or twice, how excited you are for this next in-person date. That's it. Not how excited you are for him to keep on texting you, not how excited you are for him to call you every day or him to stay on FaceTime with you till 4 a.m. because you're not trying to build a relationship where he texts you all the time. You're not trying to build a relationship where he calls you 24 seven and you're not trying to build a relationship where he FaceTimes you till 4 a.m. Okay, this is why you have to be very strategic with the way you reward guys and the way you validate them. Do not validate them for doing the things that you don't want to experience over and over again. So if you don't want him to just be content with FaceTiming you and that's your version of happiness, do not congratulate him or make him feel excitement for how happy you are that he'll FaceTime you. 
If you don't want him to be the best, try to be the best texter and only focus on trying to make you happy over text, don't say how excited you are to text him all the time. Focus your time and energy on the in-person hangouts or the dates and express your excitement for those so that that can be his focus. That can be where he spends his time thinking about how to make you happy by taking you out on the next date or taking you out to this interesting place or connecting with you in this way. Very important that you're building that anticipation in the right way. You want to balance your texting and calling distance with the validation that you also enjoyed seeing him and going out on your last date. This ensures that you don't feel as, sorry, this ensures that he doesn't feel as if you're uninterested with him. Because remember, you want him to be spiraling, but you also don't want to go too far into the deep end that he gives up and says, this isn't worth chasing. There's no point here. She doesn't even like me. She's not even interested in me. That's why it's good to sprinkle this in as a reminder of how much you enjoy spending time with him, that he will be motivated to spend more in, in, in person time with you. Do not congratulate a textaholic. Do not congratulate or validate the best FaceTimer. Do not even congratulate the best phone caller. You only congratulate the person who puts in the most effort into the in-person dates. Don't be validating him for anything else because in reality, you're not trying to build a relationship over text or over calls or over FaceTimes. That's not what you, if you want to be married to someone who FaceTimes you all the time, well, then do that. But if you're trying to be married to someone who you have a great in-person relationship with, then you have to be focused on validating the in-person and putting emphasis on the in-person. And you have to actively at the same time be putting as little emphasis on the texting and the calling and FaceTiming as possible because you're not trying to be in a relationship with the best texter, caller, or FaceTimer. The same way you would uh, if you were to eat a meal regular, just like right when you wake up in the morning versus going to work, working out, doing a whole bunch of stuff, sweating all day, running all day, do, running around, doing errands, and then you finally eat your first meal at like nine o'clock at night and it's the same meal that you regularly eat, but now all of a sudden it tastes so much better because you've been doing all this other stuff and you've been anticipating the fact that after you work out so hard and you do this crazy workout and you go to work and you do all this crazy stuff, you're finally going to come back and enjoy a huge, awesome meal is the same way something that it seems regular seems mundane, seems like the same thing you've been experiencing feels that much better when you are anticipating it for so long. And number five, tolerance. After a while of seeing each other on multiple dates, he'll become used to being able to spend time with you. This is very important, okay? Throughout the process, you must, listen to me, you must, listen, you must cut dates and hangouts short to ensure he never leaves you satisfied or builds a tolerance towards you because you don't want him to quickly build up a tolerance of you that he no longer has to build anticipation or has anxiety when you're not around. When I say cut these dates short, what I mean, because I know you guys want me to tell you exactly how to do it. What I mean is if you're going out on a date that is meant to last two hours, so you go out on a date and you're supposed to be out on this date from 10 to 12. I know it sounds difficult, but I want you to cut that date 30 minutes short. So your date's meant to last until 12. At 1130, I want you to cut the date short that you have to go home. And I want it to be non-negotiable, like you really have to go home. Why? You want him to leave that date with you, leave that experience with you, because remember, you as an individual is also you as an experience. You want him to leave that experience wanting more. If you want to get him to chase you like a drug addict, if you want, if you want him to just feel indifferent towards you and be chill about you, that's fine. If you want to get him to chase you like a drug addict, you want him to feel like he didn't get enough of you after seeing you and he needs more of you. Okay. Very, very important. You do not allow his tolerance to build up by spending a whole bunch of low quality time with him. Okay. Very, very important because if his tolerance builds up, he's going to go from feeling 
really strongly about you and feeling a whole bunch of emotions towards you to feeling very indifferent about you. Once that indif indifference settles in, you no longer can have obsession. You can't have obsession where indifference is and you can't have indifference where obsession is. Okay. He's got to feel strong emotions. This is why. Okay. This is a very important side note. You make yourself uh, M said it perfectly just now. She said you have to find the balance because it is a balance. Okay. Like I said, you don't want to go too extreme in any one direction because any one direction of too extreme is going to be tough is, is not going to do the get you the desired result. You want to make yourself just available that when he plans and waits long enough, he will see you and have a great time with you. But you never listen to me. You never overstay your welcome. Never, never, never overstay your welcome. This is like a tip for life, but like don't do it in with your relationships, especially because as soon as you begin overstaying your welcome, that person will grow a tolerance for you and they'll become bored with you. So you stop going from an experience that feels really good to see and hear and be around and touch and smell. And it's like all of these emotions that come around when you're around and you start just being an everyday mundane part of life. And especially at the beginning when you really want him to be in the chasing addictive state, you do not want him to be thinking of you as a mundane chill experience where he doesn't really feel anything towards the experience of being with you. I would advise you, you want, you guys always be like, I want your advice. I want to know what you think. I want to know what you think. I would advise you. I know this is going to suck. I would honestly advise you to avoid sleepovers because sleepovers at the very beginning, first of all, you're putting yourself in a bad position because you're going to be tempted to give away your squirtle when you're sleeping in bed with a guy that you like. Okay. That's already a bad position for you to be with because you're going to, you're definitely not going to, he's not going to, he's not going to be addicted to you if you give him squirtle on the first day. Okay. Let's just get, we, we should know that already. Aside from that, what the sleepover also does at the very beginning is it goes from, I have to plan a date with you. See, I, 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 I spend all this time anticipating you. I have to wait a week to finally see you clear my schedule to finally see you. I finally get to see you. Oh my God. When I do see you, you're all done up. You look so beautiful. You're so mesmerizing. You're so amazing. I just, I just want to take you in and breathe you in. The experience with you was so much fun. We're so much banter. We have such a good time. And then you go home and it's like, oh my God, you're gone. And all I can think about is the memories of having such a fun, amazing time with you. Here's what happens though. Some of you go out on this date and you enjoy your time with the guy and then you go back to his place. And even if you don't sleep together, you end up sleeping over just out of convenience or for whatever reason, maybe you just want to extend the date. But what happens is the date, the first two hours of the date is really good, really enjoyable. You have a great time. And then you go to his house. Maybe you have some more chatting to do, you know, have some more fun and all that good stuff. But then eventually it dies down because it can't be fun and exciting for 24 hours. Okay. It's just not how it works. And so eventually you go from this experience that's so fun and exciting and awesome at the very beginning that he wants to see more and get to know more and want to chase more like a drug. And you become just kind of something that's just there because he goes to sleep with you and then he wakes up with you and you're still there. But, you know, in the morning you guys are on a date and it's not really that exciting and it's not really that fun. And, you know, you're kind of just living life. He kind of gets up and you're there. He kind of goes to take a pee. He comes back and you're still there. It's kind of like, oh, well, I mean, what do you want to do? You want to get breakfast? Yeah, sure. We'll get breakfast. And you kind of eat breakfast and you kind of just sit around. Maybe you talk about last night and you're kind of just still there. And maybe you have no work the next day. So you don't really go anywhere. And you just, you guys kind of just hang out for the rest of the day and you're kind of just there you kind of just watch some stuff and you're kind of just existing and all of a sudden you go from an experience that he associates with all of these strong emotions to now you're you're just there you know i don't like i was really happy when we went on on the date but then by the time you leave all he can think to himself is i just spent the whole day with her and yeah it was cool She's cool. And you become less of an addiction. And, and I say this not to like be like, oh, God, guys, don't do anything fun. Don't have any type of fun. 
I just want you to understand, especially at the beginning, why some of these things happen, right? Why, why some of these guys might lose interest, why some of these guys might chase after you, then all of a sudden they stop chasing after you. In the process of him being so interested in you, you have to manage the fact that I know you're interested in him. I know you like him. I know you want to be with him as well, but you have to manage your the dosage that he receives of you. And when he receives that dosage, that he can continue being interested in you enough to continue chasing after you. Okay. You can't give him such a high dosage so frequently that he builds up that tolerance and he no longer is interested in the drug that is you. You have to be strategic about how you give that dosage out. And when you give that dosage out, that he can constantly be fiending to come back for more. Number six is addiction. As you continue this cycle, you become a full blown addiction for him. Okay. If you're doing this right, more of you never feels like enough. If you're doing this the right way, you're having, giving him the right dosage at the right time. He'll begin to push for more things all the time. So he's going to start asking you, can we hang out more? Can we spend more time together? Can you sleep over? Can you uh, do this? I want to do this. Let's go here. Let's go there. Let's hang out more. I want to spend more hours, more hours, more hours, more days, more weeks, more months, more years. If you have not slept with him, hopefully you haven't slept with him at this point because that was never part of the plan. Okay. When you're giving him dosages, that doesn't mean you're giving him squirtle. He'll begin questioning your interest in him after a while of this going on where he's anticipating you. He goes on the next experience with you. He's got another high with you. It's so amazing. He goes back and he's like, damn, I need the next one. I need the next one. And the cycle just continues. If you're not sleeping with him throughout this process, now he's going to, now he's going to start questioning again, spiraling. <sighs> She's going out on these dates with me, but she doesn't want to sleep together. Is she, she not into me? Am I, am I disgusting to her? Is she, is there something about me that's just off putting? Is she turned off? Does she have something else going on with another guy? Is she emotionally unavailable? What's, and he's going to start spiraling again. Okay. That this addiction is just going to be full blown. Because now he's going to be in a vicious cycle of seeing you, loving your his experience with you, and it being so amazing. And then the anxiety of not being with you, the anxiousness of not being with you, and then that anticipation to see you and experience you again, where he gets that dosage and he's like, oh my God, I'm in euphoria once again. And it is a vicious, vicious cycle that, that works out in your favor. As you don't sleep with him longer and longer and longer, this addiction grows more and more and more and he becomes a fiend now in this process you do your best not to validate him by sleeping with him because that sleeping with him becomes the ultimate validation that like yes i like you so much that i'll give myself to you and once you give yourself to him he goes oh now i don't have to i don't have to spiral anymore i know that she likes me i know that she's interested in me i know that she wants me Ah, uh, now I'm bored. Uh, what's the next thing? Especially when you give that to him at the beginning. If you play your addiction cards right, he'll continue being addicted to you and being enchanted by you in this process. Remember, you're also doing your own things. W what I mean by that is you're extracting information. Remember, we've talked about in the process of like doing dating these guys and seeing these guys, you're always trying to extract information that is this the man I'm looking for that will treat me well in the relationship and has the qualities that I want in a husband and a, a potential father to my children. If it is, then I continue seeing that person. If it's not, I do not waste my time with you. So remember why I talked about asking questions. I talked about uh, talking about exes, allowing him to show you who he really is over time and experiencing him in different situations, experiencing him when he's mad, he's sad, he's upset, he's happy, he's angry, all that good stuff. All of that is information you hear, see, feel, and observe of him that you take in to help you make a decision on whether or not this is the guy that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. So the process of you enchanting him that he feels like you're his drug is all for the for the purpose of having his attention over here that he doesn't realize all the information you're actively extracting from him over here it's the sleight of hand remember 
I talked about casting a spell. You're enchanting him and you're playing a magic trick right in front of his hands because it's not real magic in the three dimensional sense, right? The magic is that I can take your attention over here and do something else over here that you don't realize. And then by the time I hide it over here, I come back after I put your attention over here and I say, look, there's nothing in my hand. It's magic, right? You're taking information from him. You're gathering a bunch of information. You're getting him to open up to you. You're getting an understanding of who he is and unbeknownst to him, he doesn't realize it, but you're using that information to determine whether or not you're even going to give Squirtle away to him in this process. And once you determine that, once you're sure of that, then and only then is when you give that Squirtle away because you've extracted all the information that you needed to extract while you were enchanting him. And if you realize that this is not someone worth giving yourself away to, you don't give him anything for all the time he spent enchanted and invested in you. And then you get to walk away scot-free. You see how that works in your favor? I know for some of you guys, you're like, but I don't want to, what, why do I have to, I don't want to do all the work to make a guy change. Um, that's too much work. Um, um, um I don't want to, you know, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. That's too much work. It's games. It's a lot of games. It's games, games, games. I don't like games, games. Why are we all playing games? When you get a guy to chase you, like an addiction, you can get exactly what you want from him. That's why this show is called The Players Club, because you understand how to play the game of not just romance and love and relationships, but of life, that you can get what you want out of life. There are players and then there are people who get played. You can choose which one you are, but you will only be one of the two. If you are not doing the playing, you will be the one getting played. That's fine with me. That's fine with me. It doesn't affect my life in any way, shape, or form. If you want to be the one getting played, that's fine. Just don't complain about getting played. You can be part of the Players Club and you'll have control of your destination. You can keep it hands off and leave everything to chance and say, we should live in a utopia world where everyone treats each other how they deserve to be treated and all parties involved get the respect that they deserve and everyone sees each other as an equal human being and everyone does things out of the kindness of their heart, not to serve themselves, but to serve other people. And everyone's the most generous, kind individual on earth. And we all hold hands and sing Kumbaya and you know, everything is sunshines and rainbows. If that's the world you want to live in cool go live in that world you're probably you're wasting your time listen to me i'm full of bs i don't know what i'm talking about i'm i'm an idiot don't listen to me i have nothing to offer you you go live in that utopia world the rest of you who actually want to learn how to change your situation and get what you want out of life and get what you want specifically out of relationships will join me in the players club and understand how to play the game of life and love and relationships where you can get what you want out of them, even if it's just a long-term relationship, doesn't have to be something super malicious.